Okay, so uh, hello everyone. Uh, thank you for listening and watching to this podcast and podcast. <laughs> I'm Aulion, uh, I'm an editor at K2.0, and I'm happy to be moderating this conversation who for sure will be interesting. Uh, I just want to tell everyone that this is a podcast within the Balkan Perspectives uh, podcast. Uh, the very conversation we're, we're going to have today uh, is about youth and dealing with the past and transitional justice. So um, I'm, I'm truly uh, delighted to be in the company of two bright young people. Uh, that's uh, Mila Mihailovic. Welcome, Mila. Thanks for joining us. And uh, Shvetem Ramadani. Thanks for joining us, Shvetem, too. And I know you have quite long bios, as, as uh, although you're very young, and it's impressive, so I'm just going to let the both of you introduce yourselves, and uh, it's going to be a short introduction. And were you, were you, if you can, uh, try to tell me why exactly did you choose transitional justice as an area uh, for your activism? Who is going first? You can go. I'll go with them. Okay, okay sure. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, hello, uh, my name is Shpatim Ramadani. I'm a youth activist from the city of Erizai. Uh, I have worked with uh, different uh, NGOs on uh, mostly on uh, human rights, environmental issues, uh, dealing with the past and uh, other areas of interest uh, that uh, the youth that are necessary for the youth. Um, currently, I'm studying uh, biochemistry, and uh, yeah, that's me. <laughs> Why transitional justice? Uh, because I think like uh, our society needs to work more. Uh, on this topic because the war has left a lot of uh, damage, if I could say, and uh, we as youth need to, to make the first step on moving forward because uh, we can, um, sorry, uh, we can continue on uh, living, but uh, we need peace. So this mm -hmm. is why we need to bring peace to the victims and everyone else. Very nice to see you, Olivia. Uh, all of all, all of you again, because we are filming this for the second time due to technical issues. I must say that the environment here is very nice. Like I like this plant, but it's too cold. But anyways, <laughs> here we are. So uh, my name is Milan Mikhailovic. I'm a human rights activist and women's rights activist, working with intergovernmental constitutions and also with civil society as well. Uh, why have I choose transitional justice? Because um, transitional justice, as it is has uh, four main pillars that it operates with. So when you actually combine those four pillars and bring them up to the society that is going through a post-conflict situation, um, then you're actually going to see uh, that there is a very big uh, pro of having peace and actually doing peace building within your community because transitional justice and its principles is something that is bringing uh, not only peace to us as a civil society, but also peace to the families of the victims. And that is our mission, it's uh, bringing justice to the table and not letting it just go under the rug. Okay. Okay. Fantastic. Uh, thank you both for your answer. So uh, let's let's move right in uh, to, to the to the to the topic we're <laughs> here for. And as Mila said, uh, it's always great to have multiple discussions on the on the yeah, topic because exactly. last time we were together, I know we had a lot to say mm -hmm. and a lot was left unsaid so I think this is our shot to to say everything we wanted to say so uh, as you both mentioned I know you've worked together and individually mm -hmm. in the topic but you're also very young and none of you was born during the war or mm -hmm. before the war but after it which is uh, quite interesting to mm -hmm. me you know to, to know that you are activists in in the area so where do you as, as young people stand in the search for transitional justice where do you think youth stands in, in, in the search? You're having advantage of <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no one is having advantage. We're all so. Yeah, sure, Mila, you can go first. <laughs> okay. I don't. Yeah, it's, yeah, we are having a certain. Certainly, we are having a lot of positive energy today. So, that is where all the jokes are coming from. And Timmy and I are friends as well. So, yeah. Uh, well, uh, I must say that the the position of youth and transitional justice is very it's, it is indeed very uncertain uh, because um, our expertise is um, 
let's say, being neglected by many. And the way that we are perceiving transitional justice as a concept, a, a just concept, is um, uh, not uh, perceived in a positive way by many because uh, we are concerned, uh, we are considered too young for this. We are considered as some uh, who are not eligible of taking the place in, in, the, in the spaces that are related to transitional justice and dealing with the past concepts. But I think we are actually the most eligible group to work within this uh, within this field. Why? Uh, because uh, uh, me and Timmy are two representatives of you talking with you today that have experienced mm -hmm. a lot of negative consequences that came from the war and that came com from the conflict between communities. And uh, we are actually uh, we are actually a living testimony uh, of of um, um, of something that is called peace building and mm -hmm. it's not actually peace building you know mm -hmm. uh, we are we are actually we are we are testifying the fact that our societies haven't uh, moved on because there was injustice we are testifying uh, the fact that um, we won't move on until we speak up mm -hmm. and transitional justice as it is it is a valid it is a very delicate concept it is a very um, um, sensitive topic to be brought up because uh, people are having the transgenerational trauma within themselves and that is completely okay because no one has cured from the war because no one actually implemented the cure if and if we can call it mm -hmm. so from the political side we are not talking about the civil side we are we are now coming from the civil side initiating it as well so um Yes, I, I, if, as I come back to what I've said, uh, our position is very uncertain, but I think that by our acts and our way of standing up for, for transitional justice and uh, our way for actually speaking for truth is, is going to make us um, more eligible in the eyes of those that are ruling over, you know, that are having, that are having, uh, that are having the power to do so. So, yeah. Giving it over yeah. to Spitem. I'll, I'll, I'll focus Spitem into, thank you, Mila. Mila said that our experiences as young men and women are dismissed by many. So if you, if you can continue that and follow up on that, yeah. who are the many that are, are making it hard for young people to be engaged in, in the area? Uh, yeah, I agree with Mila that uh, we as youth uh, are in a delicate situation because uh, most of the youth is born after the war and um, that kind of gives us an advantage that mm -hmm. we can put uh, our biases aside to see a, a bigger picture and because uh, we haven't suffered the trauma directly and like the propaganda and everything that the media did during the war. Uh, so that's uh, kind of ad an advantage that we have but uh, in the eyes of like uh, the government or even our uh, older generation in our families and our societies they dismiss us because we uh, as Mila said are seen as inexperienced mm -hmm. uh, despite our uh, our knowledge and our uh, work towards uh, reconciliation or peace building or whatever um, so uh, sorry um, and uh, I <laughs> sorry you missed my yeah, yeah. 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 Okay. Uh, uh, Mil when Mila said many dismiss our, I think you answered the question. You yeah. said families, governments, yeah. and Everybody. so so I think that was that was pretty much it. If if you agree, Mila too. So I'm really gonna go to the government because obviously our governments, and and I'm here referring to the government of Kosovo and Serbia in in a, in a more narrow context of mm -hmm. of transitional justice. You know, because there's there's much more to it, but there's a dialogue going on and there's not much uh, there's not much awareness about what's going on in this so uh, w what position do you where are you positioned in this in the in the dialogue because of course governments have the resources and they can really make things happen but we don't see much happening in that front and you are both engaged in making something truthful take place so Governments, politics, dialogue, and, and youth. Uh. <laughs> okay. <laughs> we need to have some. Yeah, okay. Okay. We, <laughs> okay, we, we'll we, need, we need to throw a coin <laughs> next time. So. Okay, yeah. we'll do. Um, so, yeah, there's uh, dialogue happening, but like uh, 
personally and uh, speaking for most of the youth or everyone else, there we're not uh, very no knowledgeable about what's happening or what's going on uh, because uh, let's be fair, we're not getting enough information from uh, what's happening for, from the dialogue. And uh, with everything else that is going on, I feel like the dialogue has been like uh, put on pause because of like bigger problems, if I could say, but it's still a very important uh, topic that needs to be discussed. Uh, but yeah, the government isn't, uh, the governments aren't doing uh, as much as they should because they uh, have to, they have to do more about the families or uh, victims of uh, rape and uh, genocide and everything else, or and the families uh, who have uh, missing family members. Uh, we uh, we have to bring peace to those uh, victims because everything we can't move on without uh, acknowledging that what has happened. And uh, if no one is paying the uh, is if no one is suffering the consequences of what they did during the war, we cannot move forward because, uh, as I said, uh, it's still those wounds, even though 20 and something years have passed, but like it's still fresh for some people mm -hmm. when they see like uh, uh, when they set the table and they have empty places and uh, empty rooms, empty graves, and that's hard for uh, people. Yeah. This is uh, why uh, they, the victims, the family of victims, they need, uh, uh, they need. I forgot the word. <laughs> uh, closure. Closure. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> they need closure to move on forward. Mm -hmm. So uh, that uh, that is something that uh, the governments need to focus on. Do you think? Do you think, Shpatim, there's a reason why our governments are keeping it rather hidden, or as you're saying, not transparent the mm -hmm. process? I think it's because they're not doing as much as they should, so they don't really have anything to say. Mm -hmm. And uh, this is why we're not uh, on, we, we don't know what's uh, going yeah. on really, so we, I feel like they're not doing enough. So, so Mila, I'll, I'll follow up with what, mm -hmm. what uh, Shvetim just said. Uh, of course, we came to the families who should be mm -hmm. the center of how mm -hmm. transitional justice is dealt with and the past okay. is dealt with. So uh, do you think this kind of la dialogue, the one that is happening there, up there, you know, and I intentionally say up there, is going to do anything, you know, no. <laughs> based on based on what you've seen? There is, there is a very simple answer to this, uh, yet a very complex background that needs to be at least briefly explained to those who are listening and even to you, too. So... Um, the biggest problem with the dialogue that uh, is the fact that it's affecting civil society instead of uh, making um, the bridges for reconciliation and peace building. Why? Because um, what is currently happening, okay, this is going to sound very controversial, very subjective, but it is how it is and I'm going to put it uh, to the table. Uh, the fact that dialogue is even producing uh, more conflict because of the fact that we are talking about minor issues rather than talking, uh, rather than actually covering the major ones under the rug, you know? Because, um, you know, when uh, when um, there is there is a very, I think that uh, emotions are having a very a big thing, a very big play in everything that is currently happening because most of the political scene, both from Kosovo and Serbia, have been affected by the war, not to mention that some of them have been suspected as war criminals as well. So uh, having such people on the political scene is... Um, is even affecting the relations, the political and economical and social relations between countries and even in the region itself. Why? Because, um, you know, Aulion, uh, for example, I don't know, uh, today there is this plant and uh, I broke down the pot where it is planted, but uh, rather than talking about the fact that I broke the pot, I'm going to tell, oh, you know, I accidentally pushed it like this and it fell down and it wasn't my fault you know uh, we I mean if we are in an adult world you know we need to we need to make sure that we are facing the consequences of not only our acts but of the acts that we are currently in uh, in in charge for you know because yeah. Politicians haven't come. Some of the politicians. Okay, oh, this is not politically correct, <laughs> and we don't. But um, you know, as I've said, the political scene is not uh, as constructed as it needs to be, and um, instead of telling the truth and instead of talking of 
the major things that are going on instead of the talking about the fact that uh, we don't know where are the victims, we don't know what happened with many of the victims, uh, we don't know what happened with the victims of sexual assault, of this, of that. We don't know how families are facing that. We don't know what's going on. We don't know this, this and that. Oh, I'm going to talk about card tables because it's appropriate for the dialogue. No, it isn't. I'm not going to move on with that. I need to move on with justice. I need to move on with peace in my soul because that is what uh, that is what families of victims need to have. Mm -hmm. That is what belongs to us as civil society that is initiating recon reconciliation. So that is something that is lacking from mm -hmm. the dialogue and it is um, <clears throat> it is a very major part of it. Mm -hmm. So it's it's completely fictional to say that we are having dialogue and we are not having these things discussed, you know, because it's I don't I don't consider it a dialogue, you know, at least it's not truthful as it needs to be, in my opinion. Again, and there is there is a very big uh, there is actually an enormous lack of transparency. Uh, yes, we are knowing from the news that they are discussing about the car tables, but. I don't know what is going on inside of the negotiating room, nor will I know because I am part of civil society, I am a civilian and I'm not having access to those information or to those rooms. But making those information quite more accessible and, and inclusive for civil society would be good, but unfortunately there isn't such thing yeah. going on now and yeah, but unfortunately with this kind of dialogue if we can call it dialogue we are not moving forward and we are not going to move forward exactly because of the yeah. because of the facts okay facts for me it's very subjective but uh, mm -hmm. what i mentioned in 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 past when i've talked so yeah but i think that the bigger problem than not having dialogue than have than lacking dialogue is the fact that we are lacking empathy and solidarity between ourselves you know, because uh, you are uh, seeing um, people who being affected by the war directly or indirectly, and uh, because exactly because of that transgenerational dra uh, trauma and because of that social stigma, our hearts are too distant. You know, and in this situation, we need to put it more close because, as I've said, uh, emotion emotions are a big part of our lives and they're a big part of transitional justice and everything. Yes, we need to have a neutral perspective towards conflict, but uh, we must acknowledge our emotions and the way we feel because that is also one way of moving forward, the collective way of moving forward. So, yeah. So, yeah, it, it definitely, it's a dialogue without without people who are willing to take responsibility, I believe, or or you know, say I'm sorry it, it, or I don't I don't need a sorry. Um, nor the people who have suffered need a sorry, okay? Uh, what they what they need is that missing person coming back and there is no way of, of that happening, okay? So we must find a way to at least to compensate the ten percent of that, mm -hmm. to give yeah. them space to talk, to give them, to give them space to learn what actually happened. Okay, and this is what we are initiating here, mm -hmm. uh, because uh, you know it's I cannot, as we are seeing from what is what we are having presented to us. Uh, politicians haven't done so much they are fighting on the tv and when you know when everything finishes they're i don't know in the background shaking hands asking if they want to go for a coffee and we are still having the justice that is unsatisfied as one of the main pillars of transitional justice and i don't as i said i don't need the sorry i don't need the fictional dialogue i need real things i need truth yeah. you know because if soul is on fire then what to do I don't care about the sorry, I don't care about words, I don't care about anything, I want my soul to be at peace. And that is what people that, that suffer through war yeah. and that yeah. were affected by war want. Yeah. And that is what we need to bring them, that is what we need to give them. Shvetim, uh, Mila, Mila is saying that we need real things and absolutely a, a sorry must always be followed up by action yeah. that, that yeah. somehow <laughs> repairs even though some mm -hmm. things cannot be repaired, obviously, but uh, but what do you think these real things are as a young activist in the area? Like, how do we go forward with 
transitional justice, what should be done, what uh, are you doing, you know. In yeah, that sense. I agree with Mila that uh, sorry doesn't cut it uh, for a family that has suffered uh, major trauma uh, during the war. And uh, we, uh, in order to move on, like the necessary things, like the actions that we need are uh, the war criminals, the people who actually did the crimes during the war to uh, go to court to be judged and to suffer the consequences of, of what they did. There are plenty of facts. The facts are there. Uh, you have tons and tons of wi witnesses, mm -hmm. uh, but we are lacking the justice. Mm -hmm. We need to find the people because there are plenty of names that people know. Uh, so that, uh, as Mila said, unfortunately, there are political fi uh, some political figures, and we don't we can support them. We don't. In no way we need to support the mm -hmm. war criminals. Mm -hmm. We have to, we have to get them before a judge and them to uh, take a sentence and suffer the consequences of what they did. Unfortunately, they can't suffer like 100% of what they did because that's not how justice works. But yeah. at least it will be bring peace and closure to the families. So that's the first step of how we can move uh, forward mm -hmm. to. A reconcile uh, during after this very big trauma that uh, has happened. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, so one of the key words that I'm getting here is also solidarity, empathy, and and yeah. communication yeah. between the people. Because in essence, we're all, the three of us yeah. support that idea that mm -hmm. it's the people, not 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 the politicians in yeah. suits and ties. So, uh, I want to ask the both of you during your your work. Mm -hmm. Have you, do you interact with young men and women from other communities, from other experiences? Mm -hmm. what, is, what do you take out from, what do you take mm -hmm. from that communication? Because I think your friendship, for example, is mm -hmm. like, is the way things should, mm -hmm. should go, you know? Mm -hmm. So yeah, okay. what's <laughs> happening in the grassroots that we're not seeing because I think we're being painted a different picture, as mm -hmm. you're saying, you know? Exactly. Yeah, we are. Uh, unfortunately, we are. Uh, personally, I, I uh, of course, not a lot, but I have worked with uh, Serbian youth in Kosovo mm -hmm. or from mm -hmm. Serbia in like regional uh, uh, projects and programs. And uh, I can probably say that most of the youth activists are trying to take a step forward to uh, do what we're we're uh, saying here that needs to be done. Of course, there's always a percentage of uh, people that uh, unfortunately have been brainwashed by uh, uh, their families, the medias and politicians and everything else. But uh, uh, most people, most youth, uh, most youth activists are trying to make a better uh, society for everyone else. Mm -hmm. And um, it's, it's true that uh, uh, this kind of cooperation like uh, me and Mila and other youth from different communities like Albanians and Serbians or Roma mm -hmm. and everything else uh, need to be exposed more to each other mm -hmm. because uh, that's that allows them to interact to create friendships and then to um, communicate and, and to enforce it. yeah exactly uh, and this communication is like a dialogue is communication we need to start like a, a from youth because the youth are the next uh, next uh, Sorry, next, next political, generation. yeah, next generation, next yeah, next uh, prime minister, president, or whatever. Yeah. Uh, so if the youth is um, open to moving forward, has a better uh, knowledge, and uh, uh, knows a better way to achieve what we're trying to achieve, mm -hmm. uh, we need them to get in contact so they can uh, sympathize them, uh, with each other to mm -hmm. know what the other is going through or what uh, the other communities have uh, mm -hmm. been through in order to move forward. Yeah. Okay. yeah, I mean, uh, I partially agree with uh, what uh, Shpitim has said. Uh, no matter, uh, he mentioned that um, our generation will, we are, we are going to be next generation of prime ministers, politicians, this and that, wearing suits and ties, going on meetings and doing this and that. But uh, it's not only about that. Uh, we are still going to have you that are going to work in 
primary civil sectors. We are still going to have youth who are going to fight for their bread on a daily level. Uh, we are still going to have youth that are going to be engaged in civil sector. We are going to have youth that are going to work as teachers, as professors, as, I don't know, assistants, project assistants, blah, 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 this, this, and that. So it's not only about uh, educating a new generation of politicians and raising awareness and bringing more exposure because we are going to help politicians. No. It's because uh, I want to leave, when, if I have kids one day, I mean, God knows what will happen, but if I have kids one day, I want, I want them to give a chance to live in a world where they will be understood, where they're not going to face the same consequences that I have faced from the war, the social consequences, where they're not going to see how neighbors are hating on each other because of politics, where they're not going to be involved in such situations where uh, derogatory language is going to be mandatory for each other. Because um, I have this kind of certain uh, principle that I believe uh, we are only getting in conflict when our hearts are too distant. You know, and it's because uh, our 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 thoughts are more louder than our emotions, than our uh, intuition, and that emotion that is guiding us through life, and that is not good because um, that is that emotion is actually our inner voice, our primary inner voice. So if we are not capable of uh, maintaining as, as beautiful as it is and, and as pure as it is, then we are kind of losing the purpose of why we are actually on this earth. So uh, I want to educate you because um, for me, it's better for my children to not give them a chance to live in the world where I'm living currently, you know? So it would be a better gift for them to be unborn than to be born, you know? So that is why I'm educating youth, because I know that youth will make changes. I know that youth will change perceptions. I know that we are having power because I'm currently raising my power. That is what you are doing as well. That is what Aulion is doing as well. And we must continue to do that. Uh, there is, there is um, what I have spotted is that we are all when I when I I mean during my work with with mm -hmm. uh, youth that are coming from different ethnic and faith communities I saw that we are all working towards on collective social aim and that is to be peaceful within all uh, within ourselves and within our societies within our surroundings that we are living in and uh, what we are also seeing that we are lacking like mm -hmm. collectively is education uh, because if we've had enough of educations, we would avoid the, the situation such as being brainwashed, being mm -hmm. uh, led by those who are wearing this and not uh, not this. What is this called? T neck, right? Yeah, it, yeah not wearing yeah turtleneck, not wearing turtleneck as me, you know. And uh, we we must. Um, show the importance and the uh, essentiality of having of having the education of uh, bringing knowledge and of actually you know because yes i'm having my expertise my youth expertise and uh, you team is having it as well but it is nothing if we can't share it with anyone else so um, and as i've said we are initiating same goals uh, we are initiating peace building we are initiating reconciliation and we are initiating coexistence that is not only going to be based on pillars of uh, cooperation, work cooperation, job cooperation, but it is going to be based on um, uh, on um, primary uh, human relations, both intimate and unintimate. So, yes. I've spotted, I actually, something that I've spotted is that um, uh, there is there are big barriers and big social stigma between all of us, mm -hmm. you know, and there is no way of breaking it down if you don't want to do it for yourself. Mm -hmm. If you're not courageous enough to just, you know, go for some things and to break that down. Yeah. Because, for example, I uh, many... Um, yeah, uh, since Timmy is from Farizai, I met one girl from Farizai, and she was like... I have never met a Serb until this time, until this time in my life. And I didn't knew that for y you were so kind, you know, that, so that is one social stigma, that we are not kind. And uh, imagine that girl staying in Farizai and not meeting me at all. Like she wouldn't broke, she wouldn't break that down, but by uh, her 
but by her willingness to actually grab that opportunity and to um, socialize and to actually interact with people who are coming from other ethnic communities made her break that down, you know. Yeah. So it's important for us to act on our own, to not wait for someone to push us to do something because... Mm -hmm. At the end of the day, we are born alone, we are going to die alone, and all yeah. our journeys like that. Yeah, yeah. But you're, you, you brought some very important uh, points to discuss, but I'm going to tap into the education one. Like, yes, we're trying our best, and we're, we're doing everything we can to bring this, uh, to, to bring justice to the people and to have them talk to one another. But uh, we have, at the same time, on the other side, we have the media that mm -hmm. very often tries to paint the picture of victim, glory, mm -hmm. whatever. There's many narratives uh, being at, at play there, but also there's a system of education, say both in Kosovo and in Serbia, mm -hmm. that is quite lacking the nuance uh, of, of, of stories, is quite you know, and we have the politics, politicians that are also pushing their own narratives, and we're, I think youth are positioned in this uh, very, not just uncertain, but very confusing middle. So how do we combat all of these and make our hearts, as you said, we, we need to have our, mm -hmm. our hearts closer to one another, but it's also, I get it that it's difficult when you're being fed Mm -hmm. information from all these factors that are quite powerful so if you, if you can help me with with mm -hmm. that like uh, yeah how I, do we uh, combat it i agree with mila that education is very important in uh, this uh, specific topic because uh educate we we are overwhelmed by information and uh, in most cases is of uh, false information or uh, biased uh, uh, information from medias, families, uh, or even the school. Mm -hmm. uh, our educational system uh, lacks the uh, the topics that are very necessary for youth to know. We mm -hmm. focus on some uh, really not important mm -hmm. math things, but not like uh, law and justice and what, what we need to learn. Mm -hmm. So I totally agree that uh, uh, in our educational system, we need to learn more about first emotions and like sympathy, uh, empathy, uh, closure and peace and everything else. Uh, and then justice and peace building and reconciliation. Uh, because uh, as as we said already, we uh, lack, we like those topics a lot. And uh, with the medias, it's even more complicated because now we can get thousands and thousands of uh, news from different medias yeah. that is each one of them is different uh, because medias like represent uh, people's emo uh, opinions, not just facts. If uh, if there were just facts, you can interpret it, them as they are. But like every everyone is biased, but we need to keep those biases in check in order to move forward. Mm -hmm. And you mean? I mean, yeah. There is certainly a very very <laughs> a very great problem regards the glorification and the victimization as well. Okay, so those are like two contrasts and those two problems are systematized because you're having them within your systems. You're having them within your educational system, within your, within your informational systems and it's just going all around. You know, we are having the glorification of war heroes, you know. I I don't judge war heroes so much uh, because uh, those, those uh, people thought, uh, yeah, thought that they're going um, to war in order to protect their land. They didn't knew that their actually mission was to kill people, you know, because that's a sign of power. It's not a sign of power, okay? It is, uh, and it's, it's, it's very um, tragic for me to know that people who had, many of them had intention to actually, uh, uh, fight for fight for their for the their independence of their land and for um sovereignty and everything uh but they ended up doing 
things that system wanted them to do, not the things that they wanted to commit. Maybe some of them had a personal motive of doing this and of making damage to someone, to a human being. But I believe that many didn't. So <clears throat> we must delete that glorification, okay? Because uh, in fact, Yes, they went there to fight for the land, but we cannot oppress the de facto, as Latins would say, that they killed people, okay? Uh, we cannot suppress the fact that uh, they committed crimes. And what is most important, we can't suppress the fact that they've ruined relations even for the generations that are going to come like in 20 30 years ahead of what happened there you know so we must delete glorification from our plan we must delete uh, bringing uh, war heroes to the squares to giving them a place to actually be uh, uh, exposed you know to 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 attention because Yes, they deserve it, but in not that, not in that way. They deserve it. In fact, that we must bring uh, their examples as examples of what we shouldn't do. You know, because from everything that is happening around you, and from everyone that you will ever meet in your life, there is one thing that you can get, and that is um, that is certain knowledge. That is a certain uh, election. Is it called like that? Yeah. So uh, it's just uh, about you if you're going to take something good from it or something bad from it, and. Uh, there is also very big victimization. You know, we are facing a lot of information that are very subjective and very uh, close-minded and that are working in favor of one side, not in favor of two sides or as many sides as were involved in the conflict or in war, sorry. So um, that is also something that needs to be stopped because if you're having such two uh, Phenomena, social phenomena, as glorification and victimization. Um, there is uh, the fact that truth won't be out there as evident as we want to be, as we want it to be, is completely obvious. So uh, everything, everything that is related to glorification and to the victimization is acting oppressive towards truth. It's it is acting oppressive towards uh, towards uh, pillars of transitional justice and the basis of transitional justice, you know? Because if you're having such a s subjective information offered to you, of course that you're not going to be able to, to resonate b back on what happened and to actually, you know, seek for the truth, initiate the truth and everything. And it is very sad that our educational systems, uh, th those who are ruling over it are not doing anything. You know, because uh, by each of those things, by each of those narratives, toxic narratives, we are planting a seed of hate into our kids, into our younger generations, into ourselves as well. And that is not a way of building the bridge to move forward. That is not a way of, of initiating, uh, um, initiating a, a reconciliation. That is a way of doing something opposite that is not good for, uh, for I don't know, any of the sides that were, that were involved and that were affected. So, <clears throat> yeah. So one, one last question for, for the both of you. Like if, if a young man or woman mm -hmm or any other <laughs> gender uh, would be listening uh, at this moment and uh, if they are looking to be engaged and informed about justice and about mm -hmm. the past, what would your message be? <laughs> Me. <Go on>. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but also for them. Okay. Yeah. Um, it is very important to be real with yourself and it is very important to uh, embrace uh, both uh, uh, pros and cons of your character, of your personality. If you want to get engaged, it is very, it is crucial for you to understand that once you get engaged, you are not working for yourself. You are working for the society. You're working for the sake of all of those people that have been affected. And getting engaged in, in a field that is related to transitional justice, uh, peace building and dealing with the past processes is not naive at all. And it is very, it is essential to be educated and it is essential to be objective. It, it, and, uh, you know, just um, bringing the truth 
in the way it is, not putting uh, uh, red ribbons on it, not, uh, you know, like wrapping it in, 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 I don't know, some confetti wraps as they tend to do. Just bring it to the table, you know, but always be assertive towards other. Always gain empathy and always have that, have solidarity as part of you. Uh, because when you raise your emotion, when you show that you're that you are looking forward to connecting with someone and hearing to their story, that is how a change starts. I can't change a whole society, but I can change me. I can change my surroundings. I can change something that is related to grassroots level, and that is my way of doing it. And, and I'm suggesting to others that. They should use maybe a little bit of my suggestion, of my advice, and incorporate it into, into their everyday being. Because it is not only about getting engaged with, with the government, it is not only about being engaged with committees and this and that. It is being engaged with your community. It is being engaged with your family members, with uh, uh, members of your neighborhood, with members of, of your uh, wider community. and. It is always important to actually be engaged with yourself and with your inner self. And that is how we can you can actually initiate change and bring peace and what we are what we are looking for and that is that is justice. Yeah. Thank uh, you. I agree with you, Mila. Like you don't expect just to start uh, at like the dialogue that's happening between governments. You have to start like with yourself. You have to know yourself and you gotta be open to the possibility that you're going to face a lot of strong emotions mm -hmm. you're going to face a lot of sad truths that uh, maybe you didn't know before you knew only part of it there's always two sides of the coin mm -hmm. so get uh, open yourself to the possibility of learning new things uh, learning about the other side uh, you cannot uh, achieve anything without knowing yourself first mm -hmm. you if you don't know yourself if you're not open to learning more mm -hmm. you cannot uh, work in mm -hmm. basically anything else not just uh, this particular topic uh, you gotta just show up to uh, a training a seminar or just uh, talk with someone it's usually the talking that uh, uh, makes friendships and you can learn what what uh, what offends someone else so you don't do that in the future or you tell them someone to please don't say that I get offended by that uh, if you go like with hate speeches and everything else that Unfortunately, it's very enforced in our families and our societies. You won't be able to uh, succeed in this uh, topic. So uh, get ready to uh, n know the other side, to understand what the others are going through, and uh, try to be as unbiased as you as you can, because it's a very sensitive topic. And uh, as we said, uh, our biases are set from families, education, medias, everything else. So we need to put them aside to see the bigger picture and to focus on what really matters, which are the victims that uh, uh, has suffered through the war, uh, from the war. And we uh, just take, take the first step. That's, mm -hmm. The first step is the hardest, but uh, everything... It seems as you're falling in love, you know? You're having that bias of, um, you know, like female can't make a first step. We can all make a first step. It's just within us, so make a first step. Yeah, Regards of everything. I agree, yeah. Just, <laughs> just go start, into it. Just start, yeah. <laughs> just start. Cool. Make the first step. Uh, yeah. This is the last message <laughs> that we're, we're going to we're gonna leave this uh, podcast with. Thank you. Thank you again, Mila and Shpatim and all of the people that are watching, listening. And I really look forward to our next conversation. I don't know. I have a feeling that it might be soon. Oh, that, that sounds nice. Yeah. I'm, I'm very looking forward to us hanging out and actually having opportunities to share our opinions as well. And yeah. hope the public enjoyed yeah. as much as we did. Thank you very much. It was a pleasure. Again, this was the podcast within the Balkan Perspectives. And uh, yeah, looking forward to the other podcasts too. <laughs>